Hey there, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey, and in this video I'm going to show you the simple box for playing the penalty kill. Um, penalty kill is actually really similar to defenses on coverage. Um, a lot of the same concepts apply, and uh, in this particular case, this is actually really similar to the box plus one in your objectives. Um, your objectives are basically that you're you're shutting down the middle of the ice, and um, you know basically letting the other team um, play with the puck as long as they stay on the perimeter. So it's really good at uh, you know protecting the front of your net but at the same time, it's not very aggressive. So you're, you're not gonna cause a whole lot of turnovers. Basically, this is just, uh, you know, you're, you're buckling down the hatches and, and uh, not letting them score. So uh, simple box, we'll, uh, we'll show you kind of how it works here, but uh, this is basically um, what to expect with a, a regular box. So um, the box is slightly shifted to whichever side the puck is. Here we've got the other team um, playing an overload. And uh, basically, you just kind of ask yourself, well, is this a good scoring position? And if it's not a good scoring position, then you don't need to chase. So uh, we've got the guy with the puck in the corner. Is it a good scoring position? No. So the defenseman may slide out a tiny bit, um, you know, just to uh, acknowledge that that player is there, kind of. Um, but he's not going to go chasing, okay? That's not in the box, at least, okay? We, we, we will have more aggressive versions that, uh, that he will chase, but not in the box. Um, if the puck comes to here, well, is that a scoring position? Uh, is that a scoring threat? No. So we can let that guy stand there all day long. That's fine. Um, because from there, he's not going to score, uh, hopefully not going to score uh, any goals on our goalie. Um, so then let's say the puck moves here. Is it a scoring threat? No. Um, so we're not going to chase. Is it a scoring threat here? Uh, potentially a little bit more than than the other places so basically what we're doing is we're just making sure that no matter where the puck is um, we're asking ourselves is it a scoring threat if it is then we may need to act if it's not then we just stay in our box and make sure that nobody penetrates it so really the main guy that has some responsibility here in this particular setup uh, at this point is this backside uh, defenseman he wants to make sure that this guy is not going to get loose and uh, not going to uh, have some sort of uh, pass thread through to him with a uh, you know one time shot on the back door, um, so where does this uh, where do we have to start making adjustments? Well, let's say that this guy gets the puck and uh, starts walking towards the middle. Okay, so he starts uh, maybe trying to attack the seam or maybe he's trying to uh, get into the net there. Well, that's where we have to have a guy play him. So in this particular case, uh, it's going to make the most sense for the forward to play him. We're playing a pretty collapsed box, pretty tight box. So we don't have it spread out too much, which means it's going to be difficult for them to get a uh, you know any penetration through there by walking it. So we'll have the forward come and play him, basically just not let him get any shots on net. Where you might see some 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 action start trying to happen is if uh, you know maybe this guy starts walking and then this defenseman slides down. Um, you know, into some sort of scoring position down here. Um, that's still, it's not a huge threat. We just need to be aware of him. So if this defenseman slides down, now this forward has to have his head on a swivel, which he should have already had his head on a swivel anyways. Um, you know, both weak side forward and weak side defenseman need to keep their head on a swivel the entire time. And now he's just going to, uh, you know, make sure that this guy doesn't get loose, um, doesn't get any uh, scoring threat from there. So um, that's really not too much of a threat. Uh, you may see some potential uh, give and goes, you know, drop the puck down to the corner, then this guy goes flying through. Um, I like that, you know, give and go type of thing. But really, um, you know, that shouldn't be a problem either. If that happens, this guy should, you know, kind of edge down and then this guy picks up the guy as he's going through. And, uh, you know, you really shouldn't see too much problem. The thing is, is that with the, with the, the box, you'll probably just spend the whole time in your zone. Um, it's a frustrating, a frustrating uh, setup to play against because you know if the other team is disciplined, they're not going to suck out of position. Um, so really, what what they'll probably end up doing is uh, getting it to the points and then just trying to blast some shots through and uh, create some havoc in front of the net. But as soon as that happens, just you just collapse it in front of the net. Make sure that your defense are are uh, good at clearing guys out of the front. Um, I usually like to kind of make a, a general rule, uh, no rules in front of the net. That's usually what I like to tell my guys. And that's not to say, to, you know, go in and uh, baseball swing some guy's head off. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about no rules in front of the net. I mean, do, do whatever it takes to clear the front of the net out to make sure that your goalie has a clear shot of the, a clear view of the shot and also, um, you know, make sure that nobody's going to get their stick on a rebound. So do whatever it takes to clear that front of the net. But that's your basic box. 
Um, very safe, but you're probably going to spend the whole two minutes in your zone because it's pretty tough to get the puck back um, because it's you're not putting yourself out there to intercept passes very much. So that's your basic box. Enjoy.